Right, it's conversation time. A little bit of a longer video today. I've got a lot of thoughts that I want to go over. And I'm guessing by the title you know what this is going to be about. Rush, to me, is an odd game mode. It was conceptualised and released with the original Bad Company game originally being the only game mode offered in the multiplayer. Teams of 12 defenders and attackers would fight for control over multiple sets of explosive crates that contained gold bars, which was a reference to the single player in Bad Company. And it was the job of the defenders to stop the attackers blowing up these crates. The fact that this was the only game mode offered in a Battlefield game that was only released on the then current generation of consoles, the PS3 and the Xbox 360, signifies to me that maybe the mode was intended to only stay within the Bad Company spin-off. Fast forward to today and we have Battlefield 4 holding on to Rush and I think we can all agree the mode just doesn't quite feel the same. It doesn't feel like there's much Rush about it anymore. And today, I kind of want to talk about maybe why that is. Rewinding to the original Bad Company game for my first point, the game mode wasn't just called Rush, it was called Gold Rush. And I mentioned those gold bars, yeah, the objective for the attackers was to destroy the armoured gold crates and seize what was inside. The gold itself was fictitious, but nonetheless it gave you a story behind why you were fighting in the way you were. And second, the reason for rewinding is because in the original Bad Company game and the sequel Bad Company 2, not only could you arm the gold crates with the explosives like you can now in Battlefield 4, but you could also damage the crates as well. This meant items like the grenade launcher, C4, rockets, the UAV, tanks, all of those could harm the gold crates, and I think in the original Bad Company game, normal arms fire did damage too. This kind of mechanic meant sitting in the room where the gold crates actually were, was a viable tactic. You needed to closely guard those gold bars, or risk seeing the gold crate destroyed by a well-organised team with lots of firepower. Conversely as well though, it meant attacking from afar with those kind of gadgets like the rockets and the grenade launchers also became very interesting. The defending team couldn't simply sit back, they needed to have some of their players push out and try and head off some of the flanking attackers to stop them having line of sight on the gold crate. This kind of two-tone attacking system where you can damage the crate with explosives or arm it with the timer meant the rush mode was a bit more diverse in its first iteration. I'd argue the mode here was better because there wasn't just one way to do things. Like in Conquest, Battlefield's classic all-time mode, there is never one way to win. The Bad Company series introduced rush and people liked it. It's worth noting in Bad Company 2 that the gold crates were replaced with MCOMs, but seeing as you were playing the continuation of the spin-off series, there was still that same feeling to the mode. Moving into Battlefield 3 now, and like Bad Company 2, we see some truly great rush maps take the stage. Damavan Peak, Operation Metro, Karg Island, Caspian Border, or even Grand Bazaar. Here though, the gold crates were replaced with official MCOM stations, and they were themed to suit the more grown-up, militarised war that you were fighting. And perhaps, this is the start of Rush's decline. It's all well and good theming the game mode to the game that it's in, but when the idea is less compelling than what it was previously, I consider that a downgrade. MCOM stations were just satellite uplinks. What did they really do? Where did they lead to? There's no story there. At least with the gold crates, you knew what you were fighting for to either take hold of or protect those gold bars. Here in Battlefield 3 though, the MCOM had little meaning to the fight. There was no explanation as to what the MCOMs did. All you knew was that as soon as you got one set of MCOMs, you push on to the next one and the next one. I like it when there's a story depicting what happens if you manage to get all those all those objectives and get to the end. And in Battlefield 3, we didn't really have that. But besides the lack of story, there are still many, many servers running Rush in Battlefield 3 because the maps were just that good. I mean, look at Damavan Peak. There are still hundreds of servers playing 24-7 Rush, and that's nearly five years after release. 
And finally, we come to Battlefield 4. Oh dear god, what happened here? The same principle applies as in Battlefield 3. Satellite uplinks with no story behind them as to why we needed to destroy them, and then add that in with some extremely poor map pathing, and you have a recipe for disaster. Battlefield 4 went back to Conquest as its main game mode and really fixated on that, and then tried to promote Obliteration as the next big Battlefield game mode. Obliteration was severely incomplete and poorly thought out on launch. It's since been improved, but it's still not an amazing game mode. Conquest, of course, works well here because it always has in Battlefield. There's always that focus on map design. Can we make this work for Conquest? But Rush was almost completely forgotten about. We all know that Battlefield 4 wasn't quite cooked properly when it came out. And here, it feels like the developers didn't even have the time to balance the maps for Rush. Perhaps they just simply ran out of time focusing on other game modes, and they just had to slap it in and release the game. Dice LA have since worked on the Rush game mode, and they have made some good improvements. Certain maps have had their MCOM placements changed. Even maps like Flood Zone have had their rotation completely flipped, so you start on the other side of the map now. But ultimately... Battlefield 4 maps just don't work very well with Rush. For example, who thought having Rush on Silk Road was a good idea? No cover offered in a massive open desert where snipers can just sit behind a dune and act as a firing squad. Not fun. How can Rush be improved then? Well, based on my own thoughts and opinions, I think the game needs to have a story or theme behind it. Every single map that's built into a Battlefield game has clearly gone through a design process. Perhaps it's actually depicted on somewhere in real life. Things like that could be brought into the development process to build a story behind each map. Bad Company offered the gold bars, which worked really well. There was something physical to actually fight for. And a lot of people have asked for Rush to replace the NCOMs with a physical object located in the maps. For example, maybe a watchtower needs to be taken down to remove a 50 cal emplacement, or blowing up a building that's blocking the way of a tank convoy. These objects actually have meaning and lend themselves to a story on each map. MCOMs are very static objects and have no real meaning whatsoever. Yes, they may fit into the military style that Battlefield is now going for, but I don't really like the fact that I just have to take down satellite uplinks. It's just not really very interesting. Or if you can't go with the destroying objects in the map, at least theme the MCOMs better and bring back the damage mechanic from the Bad Company series where explosives can destroy it rather than just having to arm it all the time. Like I mentioned, it offers a different dynamic to the game mode, and it's not always going to play out the same way. Overall, I think the Rush mode just needs to have a little bit more thought and attention given to it in the next Battlefield game. There can't just be this same idea, let's just slap it in there because it's Rush. People expect this game mode to be there. Let's theme it around whatever the game's going to be. Give it a storyline, because then, you actually feel like you're fighting for something. The game mode can be really, really fun. It just needs to be implemented properly. Just before I finish today, I've got a sponsored message from one of my partners, Opinion Outpost, and in short, they want you to give your thoughts and opinions on a wide range of products and topics, and in exchange, they'll give you cool rewards like Amazon and iTunes vouchers. It's free to join, which is always nice, and it'll never cost you a penny in the long run. Only you can earn money out of this service. If that sounds interesting to you, then click the link at the top of the description and get yourself involved. It might not be for everyone, or you might not have time to take part, that's okay, but if there are people out there that want to earn some cool rewards, then go and click that link in the description. Thanks very much for watching today guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below about Rush. I really like this game mode and I want to see it succeed moving forwards. Maybe let me know what you think could be done to improve the game mode, or what you like about it. Just let me know down in the comments. And while you're down there, drop me a like as well. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.